Optics 2024 has a ton of new filters, a ton of new presets, and you know, overall just a ton of new goodness. Uh, my name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and over the next few minutes, we're gonna be looking at a shot where I'm just gonna take a little brief look at some of the new things available. Right, well, here's our opening image, and I actually think it looks pretty good, but there's a few things where we can start to build up a, uh, a bit more depth and a bit more life into the image itself to make it even more commercial. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look more towards the clothes than towards the, uh, the model. And one of the things I want to choose is a new filter in Optics called Magic Sharp. So I come to the search, go Magic, and we go Magic Sharp here. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And let's see what these do. And Magic Sharp has been a secret weapon in the continuum suite of video filters for, for quite a while now. And this is a new GPU accelerated version. Like all of the filters, we have quite a lot of presets to go from. And what I'm really interested in is trying to enhance this texture that we have in the jacket. So sort of build up a bit more contrast within the texture. And Magic Sharp is really great for this. Now, one of the things that also happens as a consequence, though, is if we turn this on and off, we start to build up a lot more uh, kind of high frequency detail as well in areas we don't really need it. So let's have a look at the parameters. So most of the stuff is being done by the sharpen amount. That's really where the main, the main focus is. And we have the, the radius. Uh, we usually want to keep the, uh, the radius down quite a bit. And then this is where most people kind of sort of tune out uh, when we come into the, the detail here. So this is where the actual magic is really happening and where we can get rid of a lot of the the issues that we might find with with uh, sort of the finer areas. So if I'm looking for something that's that's working in the clothes here, I do want to keep on that fine pass, but I can just take down the fine sharpen amount from it, the 250 where we were to around about here, 175 ish. These numbers don't really matter. I'm just looking at the image itself. And when it comes to the course pass, let's take that down to zero and bring this up. And this is actually one of the secrets when it comes to dealing with or, or adding uh, local contrast to, uh, to clothing is that we, we sort of bring up the course pass here and that brings in a nice amount of local contrast into the jacket here. So that, that sort of increases the appearance of that light to dark area within the creases. And let's take a little look at before and after. That's the before, that's the after. So I like what it's doing in the clothing. I'm not 100% about what it's doing in the face. I think it's over sharpening the face and it's making it look a little bit, a little bit weird but we're just going to mask that out. So I'm going to add an easy mask in here and I'm just going to keep in my jacket, lovely, and I'm going to take out everything else. So I can be really rough and ready with these. I come up to the, uh, the paint bucket, I'll right click to fill that and I'll left click to fill it with green. And let's see what the easy mask gets us. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, let's just right click in a bit more of the hair just to get rid of some of that hair and maybe come around the edges a little bit more just to define those a little bit. I hit uh, enter on the uh, keyboard I'll just refine that a little bit and that's that's pretty nice. Might add a smidgen of feathering to the mask. Really don't need a lot. So now we've got that magic sharp, just helping to Im increase the texture and improve the texture in our, um, in our coat there. Another area that has been improved with Optics 2024 is adding in a lot of uh, new presets. So let's come in to add another layer and let's just come to Beauty Studio. 
and Beauty Studio is here to sort of soften out some of the areas within the uh, the skin. Uh, we got some more uh, some more uh, presets here. Like commercial sheen's pretty nice. Smooth skin, keep details, pretty good as well. And it doesn't just you know with the, some of these have the tendency to just sort of wipe out all of the uh, all of the details. So I kind of like I like commercial sheen. I like smooth skin, keep details. I also like local contrast, but not for this shot. So smooth the skin, keep the details, and let's have a little look at the at the mat here. View that mat. You can see it's taking in a lot more of the area than I'd like. Let's choose two new colors. And just adjust our matte shape here. Very cool. And of course we can use this with a traditional mask as well. So we can combine those two together. So let's have a look at the output. Now we're only working on the face and that's helping to sort of smooth that out a little bit. We can change the smoothing, of course. Just kind of dampen down that sheen a little bit. There we go. We don't want to take it away too much, or completely, I should say, because that is giving a nice little bit of shape to the uh, to the face, but that's that's pretty good. So some of the other more stylistic effects that we have uh, in Optics 2024 are things revolving around prisms. So we have our prism, which is just called prism. So we can use this for sort of chromatic aberration effects or some more kind of bigger stylized effects. Sort of separate things out a little bit. Let's take the smoothness down. We can really sort of see that. See what happens if I reuse my easy mask. It's kind of interesting. Maybe not exactly what we're going for, but kind of interesting anyway. Uh, let's delete all my masks. Uh, and we also have prism lens. So prism lens works like putting up a bit of glass in front of the of the lens and we have like a number of different sorts of uh, presets to go for and we you know there are three different types of prisms we've got prism single we've got linear and we've got radial and we have whole tutorials that are really kind of focused around uh, this particular effect maybe I'll find this just for Something like this, and we'll take the reflection opacity down a little bit. And I really like these these lights. So let's see if we can pivot the lights into a different place. Yeah, I like what's happening with the lights. That's good. Okay, and we're adding another one up the top here. And with this layer, I want to start to focus on adding more elements in this. And we've got two new filters that are all about this we have smoke and fog which looks like it's all about adding in smoke and fog we have drifting smoke eat my dust uh, and light things here but we also have something called glitter sweep uh, and if you've seen any of uh, the videos that i've done about particle illusion inside of optics you'll know that we have a parameter called time so a lot of these effects are time-based effects that we're applying to a still image. So if we scrub the time through a little bit, we can see we've got this lovely kind of glittery element that's coming in through the, through the smoke. See the smoke sprite is dots. We can make this bigger or smaller. That's kind of nice. Uh, and we can we can have this moving through the image until we find out exactly where it needs to be by just changing in the time parameter. I'll change it in there. I'll, go, I'll uh, bring down the fog because I don't really want the fog in here. I just want those those little 
little glitter dots and I like those let's take the density of those down just a little bit and then we'll mask them out do the same as we did before I'm just going to come in with the easy mask and I'm going to very very quickly draw in the bits where I want to keep it like for the background and where I don't I'm just going to right click and scribble over the top here and let's hit enter and we'll generate up a pretty good mask I can come in I'll make a couple of changes but I think that's that's going to be good enough for uh, good enough for jazz I'll take that back excellent and I'll just knock a bit of the opacity down on that let's duplicate the layer send the time going a little bit further forward maybe change the scale up on that cool there we go take the density down so we've got some nice little dots sort of just popping in over our image nice let's take a look at the uh take a little look at the before and after uh before after yeah we're starting to, to build up a couple of little bits there very nice i'll uh, add one more uh, element over the top here and this is another new filter we've got and this is called orbs and guess what this does oh yes it adds big orbs over but it's it's got more than it's more than that more than that uh but let's let's come in i'll, I'll take something that's quite big maybe the uh yeah big not big <laughs> big uh, big blurry boys something like this one and over in the parameters we can choose how many orbs we have over the top here i want enough but not too many uh, we have our illumination radiance so this is how far the orbs are extending across the image we'll kind of get a little bit of fall off going on here kind of like that and we can choose where that illumination goes just using the on-screen display or the on-screen controls i should say and we can choose our color our scale randomness we have you know we have all of these controls here let's see if a different color might add something to it a little bit more sunsetty or a bit more kind of stylized i might just fit in with the the oranges from the from the background kind of like that there we go and a lot of these new effects also have prism built directly into them as well so instead of having to add in prism uh, at the end we also bring in a sort of cut down version of prism here so it just as a way of of kind of getting that subtle chromatic aberration stuff going without having to do a lot of work uh, and let's copy our mask over just by dragging and dropping again that's kind of that's kind of cool do our same before and after before after so it's not huge corrections we're making with each individual layer but the you know the end effect is is starting to to look kind of fun we'll do two more things One is my perennial favorite, film stocks. You know, I never go anywhere without adding a bit of film stocks at the end, just to tie everything together. I actually really like the default version that we've got there. I kind of, yeah, I really like that. Uh, and I'm just gonna come down to the bottom because film effect also has this grain built into it. Let's zoom in. And grain is a really useful thing to have um, in images, especially where we've done a lot of a lot of corrections and sort of maybe things have been over softened or skin's been over processed, something like that. You know, grain can can be a good way of sort of tying things together and making it look a little bit less uh, digital. Um, and we do have grain built into uh, film stocks, but we have a brand new filter in optics 2024 which is called ultra grain and this has come in from the sapphire uh, set of plugins and what this is is a digital film emulation effect 
And if we take a little look over in the presets, you can see a large range of different cameras and um, film types that have been emulated. So we can come in and we can find a, uh, a camera that we want to, to sort of emulate maybe. Uh, the reds, you know, we've got quite a few to, to choose from. Or we even have like some monochrome film stocks or monochrome stocks to, to go with as well if you just want black and white film grain. Uh, those can look kind of nice. Uh, or we can search for some of the film film grain with like the Kodak ones here. That's that's kind of good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see this in a, a bit more a bit more detail. Something in the background where we've got some clear areas. There we go. Something there. So this is the before, and this is the after. So it's already giving a, a bit of life to it, uh, but we can choose how we are coming in and really kind of diving a bit deep into this as well. So the two main controls you really want to choose are grain amplitude. So that's how much grain are you, you adding in. So that goes from zero, which is no grain added at all, all the way, I'm going to go slowly here, uh, all the way up to two. So one is the default, one is uh, where the presets all start. If you want to add a bit less, you take it below one. If you want to add a bit more, you take it above one. Kind of gets fairly noisy. Um, and the other one is the grain size. So if you want big, fat, heavy grain, we keep the grain size up higher. So it gets a bit chunky. Or if you want sort of more uh, sort of sensor noise type of thing, you can have the grain coming down a bit smaller so that every pixel uh, is sort of randomized a little bit more. But uh, obviously that takes away from, from the actual grain pattern. And if you want to, you've got tonal control, so we can have you know, no grain in the, the brightest areas of the image, or we can have a ton of grain in the brightest areas of the image, and darks and mids as well. If you want to get really deep down, we have individual controls on the red, green, and blue for the amplitude and blur as well. I'm going to take this down a little bit for my final image. I don't really need it this high, but it was just nice to to show it to you a bit higher because I know that obviously when we're looking at this on YouTube, YouTube does a very good job of trying to smear out as much grain as possible. So it can be a bit tricky to see. So let's take a little look at the before and after. Before and after. And very quickly, we've taken our sunset scene and turned it into something a little bit more stylized. Remembering, of course, at any point, we can come back in and we can change up any of the filters that we want just by editing any of those layers. But I think I'll take it back to my Agfa Optima there. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. If you want to explore Optics 2024 a bit more and you are on a current uh, subscription, head straight over to borisfx.com and you can download the new software today. Uh, if you just want to have a little explore, head over to the same place and you can take a free trial for a spin and see what takes your fancy. I'll see you in another Optics tutorial very soon.